Hey guys, Kyle with Dirt Bike Channel here. I'm out on the trail and I'm riding the Sherco 300 SEFR, just doing some testing on that. I thought I might take just a second about uh, talking about riding alone. Um, I try not to ride alone a ton, but I end up having to ride alone a little bit just because uh, I can't always fit, you know, I can't always work into everybody's schedule. Um, and I don't want to have to work by other people's schedule all the time. So sometimes, sometimes I have to ride, I do end up riding alone. And a lot of guys think that that might be, you know, a little bit of a risk, like too much of a risk, it'd be reckless. Um, I just take it easy. I don't, I don't push it as hard when I'm alone. I use that time to enjoy, you know, smell the roses a little bit, work on some skills that don't necessarily involve blazing speed. You know, work on clutch control, work on braking, work on some sort of a turn or something like that. Work on a pivot turn. Um, because I like, I like to get out in nature. I like to be out in places in places like this and up in, up in the mountains. I can't go up to the mountains yet because I've got too much snow up there. But I like to get out. Um, and I like to be connected with nature and get away from, uh, you know, the pressures of work and, and all those different things. And sometimes it's nice to just listen. Listen to the birds. Listen to nature and get out there and just be quiet. And so sometimes I ride alone so I can be alone. Sometimes I need that. Um, and it's a, it's a calculated thing. I don't, I don't push it as hard, like I said, but I do enjoy these times to come out and get centered a little bit. You know what I mean? Get away from the pressures of everything else that's going on in my life and just me and nature and the dirt bike. And it helps me. So, yeah, sometimes I do ride alone and I love it. Since this was a spur of the moment ride. Hey guys, could you do me a huge favor? If I have earned your subscription, go ahead and go to my main channel page and then just make sure that that ringing bell is checked. So make sure that the bell is ringing. That'll make sure that YouTube will let you know and give you notifications when I put out new videos. Otherwise, you're never notified. Uh, so just go check that and that would help me out a ton. Thanks guys. Uh, after work, and this is one of those times I am riding alone. I tend to be a little bit more conservative because um, I know I don't have any any backup here other than a cell phone and some guys might say that's reckless um, on the other hand I say yes I do like to ride with other people and generally speaking it is more fun to ride with somebody else because then you've got some, something to share with, something to talk about. But I, I can't always, you know, wait for other people to go. Sometimes it's a spur of the moment thing. So what I do is I try to just ride a little bit more conservative on those times. Don't push it quite so hard. And I'm taking time to smell the roses a little bit more, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing stuff like this. And I use it I use the time to explore a little bit. Um, oh, that's cool. That is a huge cliff. Got a hawk or an eagle here soaring. Anyway, I use the time to slow down a bit, explore, work on, you know, work on a certain thing. I'm not necessarily trying to work on speed uh, when I'm, you know, by myself. There was a movie from back in the 80s where a dude ends up racing it. Uh, a dirt bike ends up racing an airplane. See that? You got an ultralight, ultralight up here. I don't know how well you can see that. I'll see if I can keep my head up there on it. So there's an ultralight booking around here. And I feel like I'm on that movie. Racing the dude. 10 points for anyone who can come up with that movie. Because I, I don't know what it is, I just remember watching it as a kid, thinking how sweet was that. I might not have told you guys this, probably did, but here you have a map switch on this Sherco. You've got to the left, if you put it to the left, it puts it into grandpa mode, you know, or 
traction mode, whatever you want. It takes a little bit of the little bit of the stink off the motor. And then you, when you sling, sling it to the right here, it goes into killer B mode. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, I leave it in killer B mode. I make sure that switch is over by my thumb. On one hand, it's nice. It's nice that they have it right there so it's easy to get to. Um, I was worried that I was gonna end up bumping it a lot when I'm riding, and I haven't actually had that issue yet. So, although I was a little worried that it was gonna be too close, and, and I do think, I do think you can bump that thing accidentally. I just haven't done it yet. And I thought it was gonna be an issue, but it doesn't seem to be. So, right? Near your hand, you can think of it this way. Near, near your hand, outside, put it to the right. That's where it affects the throttle. I mean, obviously it affects the throttle both times, but to the right is more throttle, more power. To the left is softening the head there. That's my explanation. times after I get done with it, as I'm getting done with a ride, sometimes I'm chasing the sun, chasing the light, and I end up having to pull my goggles off anyway, because I can't see. Over now. Hey guys, if you didn't already know, Patreon is the best way to support Dirt Bike Channel. We've got some really cool rewards over there, so click on the link up here that you see to become a patron. That'll take you directly to our site and you can check everything out. Uh, you can donate as little as $1 per month and it would really, really help us out. Thanks a ton, guys.